Oli and G, Oli and G, Oli and G and a cup of coffee. It's Oli and G, Oli and G and a cup of coffee. It's Oli and G, Oli and G and a cup of coffee. And a Cornish pasty. Okay, we're off. Okay, so it's Ollie and G and a cup of tea, right? No, 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 no. A cup of coffee? Ollie and G and a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee. Okay, so it's a blatant rip-off from the Sam and Lee and a cup of tea. Um, so, what would you like? Oliver. Pull a cup of tea, please. Uh, what? It's supposed to be coffee. Oliver and G and a cup of coffee. Yeah, that was your decision, not my job. So, you'll notice that I've not made myself a cup of coffee. And the reason for that is I'm actually having a Lee Towersy transformation at the moment. And by that I mean I'm having my teeth done. So, I've actually got, uh, I've actually got braces in at the moment, which are these Invisaligners, so 3D printed. And, uh, yeah, then they're going to be whitened and I'm going to be kind of YouTube ready. So, uh, yeah, next, next few months we'll be uh, back to normal, but you can't drink any hot drinks when you Hi all, we're now here at Sam Prentice's house, the legend himself, the other half of the Sam and Lee show, and obviously his own show as well, so we thank you. This is the real Sam Prentice. The real Sam the real Prentice, one, as yeah. we say that, absolutely. Yeah. So we've got a few questions for you set down, obviously, um, going forward, but uh, let's start off with the first question is, why did you build a droid, and what got you into it? Uh, why did I build one? Okay. So, I mean, the story, I think I've, I've mentioned it a few times now, but I was coming out of one hobby and then looking for another one, and I think Star Wars was on the TV, and it just dawned on me, hey, wouldn't it be cool to build an R2-D2? And the story is quite relevant, actually, to you being here, because what happened was I found the UK R2-D2 Builders Club on Facebook, and I'd had a few drinks. <laughs> and... All of a sudden, bing, yeah, let me in. I'm looking through and I'm thinking, right, okay, this is quite interesting. Then I get a friend request from Oliver Steeples. And I am laughing my head off. One of the one of the nerds from the R2 Builders Club has just added me on Facebook. I exclaimed to Hannah. Yes. And it sure it was Oliver. So I messaged him and of course I didn't know who he was and I knew that there was this kind of aspect of there were a couple of guys in the UK that were working on the new films and you know I had no idea who they were because why would you you know it's, it's one of those things and I messaged Oliver and he didn't reply and I thought oh that's a bit weird and I just said something like what are you working on at the moment oh, yeah. the next day I googled him and realised who he was and I was <laughs> like oh what an arse and I remember <laughs> saying to myself oh my god it's that guy how bizarre is this so anyway then he did message me back I think I apologised and went, oh, sorry, I didn't realise who you were, and da da da. <laughs> and, you know, then you messaged me back and said, yeah, no problem. And as the conversation went on, I said, you know, obviously I was interested in building an R2 or doing something. And Oliver said, why don't you come round? You're quite local. And immediately I thought, 
<laughs> Sexy time. Right, this is this is a bit this is a bit odd. And sure enough, long story short, I ended up in Maidenhead at Oliver's house. And I even text Hannah, I said, this is where I am. If you don't hear from me, you know, because, you, you, you look, let's be fair, you never know who you're going to meet There lots of weirdos on the internet. There, there really are, there really are. And anyway, so I met with Oliver, and he showed me the workshop. He showed me your R5 droid. Um, and we had a conversation around that and, you know, sort of got into, in towards my journey of R2 building. Uh, then... I think I went to Brad's and had a look at the Oxford builders, what they were doing there at the time, which was really interesting. Met a lot of different people through that, including Mike. And then I saw you in Reading at B and Q, and you were driving around a roundabout. <laughs> yes, and I saw your van. And I was beeping and waving because <laughs> I kind of assumed that he'd know because we'd met previously. And he just blanked me, completely <laughs> blanked me. It was only afterwards I put eye waste yeah. and two and two together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, it. Yeah. And uh, and then again we saw you then at celebration yeah. when we popped up into into London celebration. And again, what dawned on me straight away was that there was this kind of sea of R two D twos. Obviously, there were other droids there as well, but there was just a lot of R two D twos. So um, when I came down to actually thinking about what I'm going to make. The Q5 droid, which was essentially Vader's droid, you know, before we knew too much more about that, was kind of on my mind, and I had no real vision of ever building an R2D2. That was never my, um, never my conquest or my my aim. So yeah, so Q5 was the first, and then the first event, of course, was with you again, Oliver, at Winchester Science Museum. Yeah. Where the where the droid got shut in the lift and it oh <laughs> and it broke its legs and the chap I was working with at the time to try and help me out with a few of the kind of machined materials and things, uh, we went back to him and we fixed the parts and sure enough within about a week or two it was back running around and, and working again. But you know, there's a when you when you get into building and you're making the choices on what materials you're going to use. My thoughts always were metal and metal and alley. Nah, I'm not. I'm not involved with that. Don't want to get too involved with that. But when I then moved into working with aluminium and, and that, they're so stable. So it kind of you know it beg it sort of lent that to insignificance in the end. The wooden frame and you know trying to make stuff myself when you know there are fabricators out there um, and there's certainly more now than there ever were elsewhere. Uh, mainly in the US now. There's people in Europe that are doing this. So it, um. Yeah, it was it was just amazing, just absolutely amazing. So that's you know, long story short, there I suppose. No, that's, just... um, that's kind of how it became a obsession. <laughs> so going back to like Q two or Q five. Yeah. Um, obviously, you mentioned it's three D printed and you sort of strengthened up the leg with aluminium. Um, what else did you learn from your first build? Wow, good question. Well, Q five was fiberglass dome which I got on eBay one night when I was, again, drunk. This is becoming a bit of a pattern. Um, uh, it was one of those things, you know when you're on eBay or you're on a media site and you see something, you go, yeah, I'm just going to have it. And then it turns up and I'm like, oh, man, what am I going to do with this? Bear in mind, you know, the house that we were in at the time was very, very small. I was building it on a kitchen table. Then I was, it was, mid, it was winter, so um, I, think, I think Brad's thing was like October time. So I got all this stuff, I put up a tent outside, I got heating lamps in there, and I was painting the um, Minds of Reality supplied me with the skins. The frame I managed to get made, I made three of those. The legs the guy made, but there was a few mistakes with it, but we made it work. And the problem with the legs were, it wasn't for any printed that part. What, what, what was the problem with it was that it was, um, the structural parts weren't plywood. So they were MDF which is why it broke. So the tips were then reinforced and we added extra extra supports to it. And of course at the time, the bits that were 3D printed were the legs. And then obviously now Mark provides steel legs, so I had the first set of steel legs off of him, and it's evolved. Um, but what I did find is obviously Mr. Badley, our um, Thingiverse at the time, and then had a conversation with him. And it just so happened that we were getting married in the town next to, well, that's my wife and I, not Michael, not not, not, not Michael, not Michael Badley. Yeah. Uh, we were getting married up that way, and I dropped in to see him and had a look at what he was up to, and you know, I think I dropped some motors off to him and a couple of beers and whatnot, and um, and that's how I kind of met him. Um, but 
what I learned from it was that you know my first uh, build and how I was actually putting it together was actually from foam board and it was the worst possible thing if you, I, I've got photos of it somewhere but it was just the worst thing in the world but I thought if I can't make this in styrene or make it in um, foam board then I'm never going to be able to make it at all so the plans are all over the kitchen walls you know and and you go into this blindly and I think now I know a hell of a lot more than I did I think you know looking at materials is certainly going to be the biggest lesson overall and the type of builder that I am I would say metal is definitely the way forward for me because I'm quite happy to literally smash it into stuff um, including uh, C3PO at the uh, uh, European premiere uh, by accident uh, and you know I kind of feel like sometimes sometimes the less materials um, possibly could could cause some um, some greater problems having said that though polymers now and 3d printing has come a long way since then so I believe now that you know you could get a very very strong droid now from 3d printing as well but um, I've got a styrene droid out there that's never been seen by anybody it, you know I've tried all these different materials but I always you know I always come back to the metal droid um, for my you know for the ones that are gonna really take some battering um, but again that's just a personal preference so your, your current R2 is that, is that majority aluminium? Or, or what? Yeah, it's all it's aluminium and steel legs. So the, the run that actually came off was probably about seven years ago. And I think um, it was done, the run was actually officiated by John R. Um, Laken. Yeah. And it, a long, long time ago. So those are steel legs from that particular run. Again, I remember Brad saying to me years ago that there are more droid building parts in the world than there are droids you know that you could you could make probably a hundred droids but they haven't you know because it's just you have bits floating around and they turn up on eBay or they get lost or they're in the back of someone's cupboard somewhere and they never really sort of see the fruition and I've been quite lucky to be in a position to be able to purchase um, all of them <laughs> as many as I possibly could although that red one did get away didn't it recently the, uh, yes. the one in Liverpool I was, I was Simon B that's it yeah Simon bought that and we were having a chat about that last week at the, uh, at the event and uh, you know fair play to him he, he managed to secure that and get that done um, I would have knocked him on the price personally but you know it's the way it goes but yeah you know I've been I've been incredibly lucky so just on just sort of moving on from that so you've mentioned a few things about what you've learned from your first build onto your second ones but what kind of um, what would you have improved further when you first had your first droid what, would, what kind of major parts would you everything um, well you know here's the thing you know wooden frames yeah they are very good and again it depends what you want to do with that droid you know the only reason I, bu I built an R2-D2 is because Lee was saying for two years we need an R2-D2 that's got to be tier 2 show me your tier 2 droids and nobody did anything and it was getting closer and closer and closer and although I'm friends with Lee it doesn't mean that I'm ever going to get you know those opportunities anyone could have done it and um it just so happened that I was the only one that did at that <laughs> so, time. Yeah, so. And then obviously now um, Paul. Paul and, oh God, there are a couple more now, aren't there, out yeah. there. Uh, and again, they've all been given, Paul did uh, a TV show, at and Dex Takeaway thing, didn't he? And, um, you know, myself and Oliver did Children in Need. Um, and it's great, you know, and again, you've got to remember back to, you know, this is charity and it's not really about, you know, if you get involved with a film or if you're able to kind of do red carpets events and things you know it's not really about all that it's more about the charity side of things I think that is a it's certainly a focal point that maybe people you know tend to forget and uh, you know again I, I I didn't set out to build an R2-D2 but I'm glad I did because it's opened up some many doors so, so that's a good yeah good point to ask um, what was your first proper event with a droid or was it Winchester uh, yeah, it kind of was Winchester, but I think proper event goes back to uh, Force Friday. Uh, we did the John Lewis one that we were all at, and then just before that, I did the Pozu um, gig as well with Q5, and uh, I was buzzing, absolutely buzzing after that. And it's the first time I met 
um, Joel as Lee's son and when we were on to uh, going on to uh, the UKG were there as well and it was just amazing just an amazing time and the press just swarmed the droid and the boots raised boots that were being released and all that kind of stuff and it was like wow this is absolutely insane so it's a great feeling you know when you're doing these things it's daunting as well so you know children in need is the droid just gonna fall off the stage um, like the guy did in, in China yep. um, or get run you know, over by a land speeder exactly yeah get run over by a land speeder or you know if we're on you know the blue carpet or the red carpet that we we're at on the premiere my biggest fear was is this thing going to just stop <laughs> is it just going to stop because you just never know I mean you, you can build it to the you know 11th degree of expertise but if it's going to go it's going to you know what happens if a motor burns out what if the friction on the carpet causes some kind of short through the leg or something. You know, you, you, what do you know? What, you never know what's going to happen. And the worst thing could have been that me and you ended up pushing the droid <laughs> off. Thankfully, you know, touch wood, that, that didn't happen. No. But it, it's incredibly daunting. And I think around that time, you know, um, I, I was quite confident in the droid. So I was quite lucky with that. But it, things do go wrong. And I'm just glad they didn't. <laughs> Um, just following up from that, I mean, why do you like attending events then? What makes you want to attend a bit? I think that, you know, you, if you've got, when you've got stuff in your house, robots and, and whatnot, you become almost desensitised to the fact that they're there. Especially over, you know, during lockdown, they've, they've all sat here for two years now, pretty much doing nothing. They've been outside a few times, they've been to an event recently, uh, and I built, I built the uh, ALT droid, obviously, in lockdown, 3D printed, and, you know, with, uh, with these tracks. And you become so desensitised to the fact that they're in your house. When you take them out, it's the, oh my God, is that, you know, people can't, people lose their minds. And again, you know, we haven't had that for such a long time. It, it, we're going to the event that we've, uh, Mike Berry, um, last week was, it really reminded me of the fact that we're all, we're all in this together and it's great that the friendships are still there, they're still being maintained. I know so many people from doing this now. It's, it's absolutely mad. But when you go to a Comic Con and you're making someone's day or you're high-fiving somebody as a stormtrooper or whatever it might be, it's all about giving back and it's all about influencing people and making people happy. And somebody seeing an R2-D2 for the first time is, you know, it's just the thing of dreams, I think. And that's why we do the things that we do. You know, the uh, Dream Flight, things like that. Even the Legoland, the old Legoland events, you know, that was that was awesome. So that's why we do it. Cool. Um, so going slightly away, it could be Star Wars. Um, what was your first ever sci-fi toy you received as a child? And do you still have it? Mm, no. Um, it would have been my brother's hand-me-down ATST that um, I think I smashed. <laughs> oh dear. And uh, you know, a few years ago, so I worked with this guy, and he was friends with Andrew Ainsworth of Shepherd and Studios. And in his in his office, he had Darth Vader's helmet, various um, stormtrooper helmets. And then upstairs where we worked, he had a full st stormtrooper suit. I remember saying to him, "Have you ever put it on?" And he went once. He said, "Never again." <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, fine." So. Um, I then got back into collecting the vintage toys around that time. So the vintage toys that you see up here, I had hundreds and hundreds of them um, at one point. And then uh, obviously we were forming, forming the business at the time and I had to shed a load of, load of stuff. So the hardships were selling my Golf GTI, which I absolutely loved, mm -hmm. and selling my Star Wars collection. Um, and then after that kind of, after we were a bit more successful in the business, I was able to buy some stuff back at premium. And uh, I've got six ATAT walkers that are in the loft um, that I bought from car boot sales and things like that. You, people are wise to it now, so you can't pick stuff up for about 15 quid now, you know. But uh, it would have been an ATST. Right. Cool. And you still haven't got it because you smashed it? I did, yeah, I smashed it to bits. Oh, no. Okay. As a child. Uh, <laughs> well, so, what, so, so moving on from that, so what's your current favourite Star Wars toy or collector? What's your favourite? Um, 
probably say the C3PO, the droid C3PO that I've got up there. Um, obviously, I'm into pop vinyl collecting as well. Um, although I've I've steered clear of some of the more um, generic stuff now. You know, R2D2 with a box of chocolates and you know the Valentine stuff. It's, it gets a bit it gets a bit naff. Uh, but I do have a have a real love. I've got the R2D2 cartoons. I've got a lot of kind of Love 17 stuff up there as well. Um, but you know, uh, I probably wouldn't sell them. They were mainly for mainly for just sort of collections and stuff. But now that we can 3D print these things, and now we've got people like you know Dave from Droid Division and um, you know Michael Bagley and Sean Shields and Matt and those guys, you know, we're able to build the things that you know, not just having a toy of it, we're able to build the things, you know, and pit droids and all this kind of crazy stuff, you know, it's mental. So actually, rather than collecting toys, I now prefer to have big boys toys. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, so, what is your favourite Star Wars character that isn't a droid? Or who, or what? Mm. I'd probably say Lando Carizian. Why is that? Is it from a stash? Uh, no, because Lando's a bit of an enigma, isn't he, in Star Wars? You know, he was there, he betrayed people, you know, he's a bit of a scoundrel, which we love. And then, uh, obviously, when we were filming the uh, Rise of Skywalker, he was there. And that was a big thing, that was a really big deal that he was there. And I took it upon myself to um, saddle up next to him and listen to him talk, because you're not supposed to engage with the actors, of course. And um, I heard him say, I'm there with the remote control pretending that I'm doing something. I wasn't doing anything. I just stood there looking around going, hmm, you know. And uh, they said, uh, it, so every, all the actors have a helper. They have somebody with them. And she said, this lady came up and said, Billy, what would you like for, for lunch? And he went in Lando voice. And I got, don't do a good Lando, but he went, I think I'll have a salad. And I thought, that's amazing. That was enough for me. And uh, off I went on my way after hearing that. And that's the memory that I'll always have of Billy D. Williams. So, fantastic. Um, so, just moving on from your character, non droid, obviously. Yeah. Uh, what's your top three favourite Star Wars droids? Okay. That's um, not Astromech. That's not an Astromech. Or are you pushing that in? Yeah, otherwise it'll be three Astromechs. Okay. Non astromech. Um, well, I do like the pit droid, and you know he's a he's a cute character for sure. This one's in a, in an auction, right? That's that's coming up soon. Potentially, yes. Okay, right. We'll, right. we'll, we'll announce that later. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll edit that one out. Um, <laughs> the the AOT droid is that an astromech? No, you can have that one. Okay, we'll have that one. AOT droid, and this goes back to again. I was with you in the cinema, and we were watching Solo. You invited me yes. to, a, to a thing, and, and um, we were watching Solo, and there was, as we know now, Tim's orange and green AOT droid, and I was like, "What is that droid? That is insane!" You know, and I was like, "What?" You know, and I text Lee, going, "What was that green and orange droid?" Because I've got to build one, and he went, "Don't." He, I remember it vividly. He said, "Don't worry about the droid. What about the film?" Because he, he was, he wanted to know what my thoughts were on it. Uh, but I was, you know, I was really taken by that particular droid. I didn't build that droid um, because, you know, it's Tim's already got, you know, the uh, the small one, the small version of that. So I wanted to do my own thing, which is why we ended up with the uh, graffiti red one. Um, so that um, and let's have a think. God, non astromech. That's really difficult. Uh, IG-88. Cool. So, ooh. So this leads on to a question that Lee absolutely hated. Oh, good. Um, what is your fa favourite Star Wars film and least favourite Star Wars film? Wow. Uh, the Last Jedi has got to be the uh, least favourite. Um... And The Rise of Skywalker is a favourite of mine for obvious reasons. Yep. Um, but um, I'd say 
Empire Strikes Back. Good choice. That's a favourite, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Um, why? I think it leads back to you know my childhood. I think. Not that I want to get too deep into that, <laughs> but just you know, you know, George did the um, you know the Building R two documentary, and I really had a, had a long time to think about that. And those original three films for me, you know, 77, 85, I was born in 81, that's all I've ever known, you know, and watching those films, and you know, when you're a Star Wars fan, it doesn't mean you watch the films every day, or every week, or every year, I don't own any of the films, so if I'm going to watch them, I'll watch them on Disney+, Plus. little plug there for you, um, or, you know, stream it, or whatever, so, you know, it's, I won't go out of my way to go and to go and see the film. So, Rise of Skywalker. The only time I've ever seen that film is in the cinema. I haven't streamed it. I haven't watched it again. It is what it is. Um, but there's something about those films that I think was just a pivotal point. And now, you know, I've made Hannah watch the majority of the Star Wars films. But I think it's going to be a nice thing to share with my son. Now, um, probably not now. But when he's able to, and I, I want eight years time. There's a, there's a thing for me, you know, when um, Luke discovers Vader is his father, and I, I know for a fact I'm going to be looking at him to see what he does Reaction. when that happens and see what that reaction's like. And I think it's it's hugely important um, to kind of understand that 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 element. But which 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 way we watch it, I don't know. Whether it's prequels or we go with the first four, you know, five, six. That's all we need to watch. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I think you know the prequels for me are a bit pants, to say the least. Um, which is why I think it was such a risk when they brought the, you know, the last three back. Um, but yeah. So so from from the, the films there, um, is this kind of a favourite scene out of all of the movies, all, all nine of them? What's your favourite scene out of, out of the whole lot? Is it that Vader kind of? Father announcement scene, or is there? Like well, I mean, that's an impactful scene. Um, What's your favourite? But I like it. I liked it when the uh, when Han Solo cuts open the uh, that what was it Tom called? Tom the Tonton. Yeah, I like quite like that. I don't know why. I thought it was a bit savage. Yeah. You know, this will keep you warm. You know. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's a favourite scene. It's something that I enjoyed. <laughs> I like that particular bit. Um, you know, I think when the uh, when the starship comes in, you know, that is the that's the scene, isn't it? When you're like, you want to go, you can beat this one out, and we go, shit, you know that, what? Um, and we had that, I think, when we were running, you and I were running into the premiere, and we were missing p bits of it, and there was just this colossal everything going on, and we were like, what's, what's happening? Yeah. What's happening? And you know, again, that's. Um, um, Rise of Skywalker was just intense from the very get-go, wasn't it? You know, it was so intense. So I think, you know, I, I think all those things, it's that, that anticipation, that element of surprise and what's going to happen. And, you know, certainly when you're part of something like that, well, how are they going to cut it? Are we going to see anything? You know, is the, is the whole thing going to be cut out? Pretty much. But, you know, what, what does that all mean? So have you seen that first part yet? Of the bit you missed on the, on the film? Yes. Yeah, I went back and we just watched that bit, <laughs> which wasn't much, to be honest. It was two minutes. It wasn't much. No, absolutely. That's, that's good to point to. That fantastic. Okay, so um, just moving on to the kind of the building part of it. Um, you're part of the builders committee um, within the UK, obviously drug builders and part of UK as well. Um, how has it changed your life being part of that committee? Um. I think it's given me some focus, something to focus on. As you can see, you know, everything's <laughs> everything's kind of born off of off of that moment. That you, know, you never know. The thing is, when you take these chances and opportunities, you never really understand where they're going to take you. And there's been moments where I was like, well, you know, and but certainly more recently with with you know Hannah and I having a child and things, it's like, well, what do you give up? Because you have to give some stuff up, right? Then we had lockdown, so I started the YouTube stuff, and you know, it's been mad. You know the amount of amount of printers that have been sent and all that kind of craziness, but that was all born off of one thing, and that was speaking to Michael Bradley and 
getting an understanding of 3D printing. In fact, Greville Wilson, who is a, uh, he was a bird, I don't, he fell off the face of the earth. He's still around it. I know he's still around, yeah. Um, but he was the person that said, oh, I've got this 3D printer. And Hannah said to me yesterday, she goes, do you remember when, I told her this week, I said, oh, I've got another two printers turning up this week, so, you know, watch out. <laughs> and she said, do you remember when you didn't know anything about 3D printing? And I was like, yeah, I do, bloody hell. And, you know, that, that it, it's formed what you know about me today I think because every day someone asks me a new question about 3D printing or droid building or how do I do this or I'd love to build a droid and you end up you know when when we sort of bat around this influencer idea as you're in the droid builders committee or as you're a droid builder when someone asks you wow where did you buy that and you go we built them how did you do that? And then you start educating people on where to go and how to find it and all that kind of stuff. And it leads on and it'll either take them on a journey where they'll be successful on it or it won't. Or they go, no, it's too much like hard work. <laughs> so, and at the moment, you know, over that over that time, over those, even the last five, six years, where you couldn't get component parts, to now be able to fabricate them through plastic seems mental now. Absolutely, it's come such a long way. It's turned around a lot, absolutely. Definitely. So, so just going from from that um, part, what is your best advice you'd give to someone who wants to start to build a droid? What's the kind of don't do it. <laughs> don't. Just don't. Um, no, you know. Again, when I first started looking at this, and you know, I was looking at where the TV was mounted, and I thought, you know what, it'd be really great if I had a static R two D two on the right hand side of the room. Then it got into, well, how do you use remote control? How do you start Padawan systems? Who is now the latest person that's come in that has an electronics background? Steve Bourdain's, for example, mm. you know, uh, Imperial Light and Magic. You know, his Padawan stuff and the elements that he's able to produce. Paula Tramp, you know, flashy lights and blinky things. You know, all that kind of stuff is, once you get an idea around, well, this is what I'm gonna do with the dome, which you can buy from Lee Towsy, uh, Astromed Info, <laughs> and uh, you know Brutus and, and Jen and all those guys out there that are able to produce this equipment. Um, it's it's staggering. It's absolutely staggering. So you know if you've got the ambition to do it, it's a really cool hobby. But just remember, it's a hobby, not a life choice. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about your life choices, your other hobbies. Yes. Um, We'll have a look in your room later. Um, but what other hobbies do you have at the moment? None. No other hobbies. I do YouTube, 3D printing. What's that called, the YouTube? Oh, we'll come on to that. YouTube.com forward slash The Royal Sun Apprentice. Make sure you subscribe. Hit a like. You know, it's, you know it makes sense. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, cut that, yeah. Um, yeah, so 3D printing is, is kind of a real dominant force at the moment and there's some, you know, again, like I say, going back three, three, five, three to five years ago with these little FDM printers, now there's some amazing printers that are out there and again, the technology is moving forward, possibly not as quick as the polymers because um, Polymaker is a, is a really good example of that. Um, not that I'm endorsed by them or anything, but Polymaker is a very good brand of filament and they make some incredible, um, almost unbreakable um, polymers. So, uh, you know, again, if you're looking at structure for legs and domes and all that kind of stuff, there's you'll probably cut all this out. I was gonna say, what about your Christmas lights? Christmas lights, yeah, I mean, that's coming back. So the Christmas lights is something that um, my neighbor, um, Renu and Ash, they had more lights than me one Christmas. <laughs> So I bought 15,000 LED programmable lights, spent probably about two and a half grand on lighting and programmable boards. Then for a year, um, every Thursday, sat on a, a training package in the US to learn how to do it and sequence it. So I do the lights, that's coming back for Halloween, um, the droid building, the YouTube channel, the 3D printing. Um, and that, to be honest, you know, even the UKG stuff, going stormtrooping and doing all that, you know, that's sort of sat on the back burner now because I don't have any more capacity. It's, but certainly now we're looking after a baby um, to do any more, any more than that. Fantastic. So just to go back to the lights thing, what, I mean, 
obviously it was a competition between the two houses. Mm. Um, and I mean, what's your favourite part of doing that? Um, again, you know, it's, it, there's these elements when you do something that's so grandiose. It is very remnant of, you know, reminiscent of the R2 builder thing. When you show somebody something you've done and they're like blown away by it, and you have 200 people stood outside your house while you're doing a Halloween, you know, light sequence, which actually in the grand scheme of things isn't all that difficult, but you have to learn how to do it and you have to learn, you know, electronics and it, it all goes hand in hand. All these hobbies go in hand in hand. Which uh, and its evolution of one thing, and that was, you know, coming along, meeting you, and going, okay, how do I build a droid? So I've got a lot to answer for, haven't I? You have, you really have, and you know that's and it's awesome. You know, it's a, it's a it's an incredible um, it's an incredible thing that's happened over a, over a quite a short amount of time, really. We've got some specific questions we'd like to ask you. These are kind of more related to, to okay. yourself. What's the best eighties band? Duran Duran. So why why was that your favourite band? Uh, again, my older brother's influence, you know, Duran Duran was his thing, and yeah. Favourite track? Um, Girls on film. Oh yes, very good. That's a classic. You're more of a wild boy. Well, could be. <laughs> could be. So, um, right, okay. So we've got a few questions to ask you. Um, let's talk about Lee. Oh god. Right. Why the obsession? It's not an obsession. These things are called hooks. Okay. So. I do I do this now with YouTube. So you'll see that there's a there's a photograph up there of a guy called Michael Laws, okay, and he is a big time YouTuber in 3D printing called Teaching Tech. So from a hook point of view, what I do is I will do things like print a photo out of him and have him in the background. And what will end up happening is someone will see that, think it's really funny, and then send it to him. And then all of a sudden I get a nod. So what's happened with that is Michael's now, in his, one of his YouTube videos about the rat rig printer, he has now um, put links to my channel and then I get a big... So Joe Telling is a 3D printing nerd. He's a, almost half a million um, YouTube subscribers. I sent him a t-shirt, which Nick designed. And uh, he got it, and he was so excited. You might have seen the video that I put up. He was so so excited. Um, and then we, you know, we have these chats on Twitter and stuff, you know, DMs and things. And what it is is it, it forms a hook. So that happened, and I was at, out to dinner with my brother and Hannah, and all of a sudden I was getting all these notifications: new sub, new sub, new sub, new sub. And it's uh, it's influencing people to follow other people. Um, which is, you know, again, we do that with Michael Badley, we do that with uh, Dave Moog from uh, Droid Division, and it's all about the hooks. So the Lee thing isn't really an obsession, it's more of a, um, obviously I respect everything that he's done, and, you know, he, he's done, we've formed quite an incredible friendship, I'd say. Um, I think, in truth being told here, I think he's more obsessed with me than is betrayed people being obsessed with him. Do you want to show the camera your t-shirt? I do, yeah. So this is... this uh, is A t-shirt with Lee on it. This is the Jimmy V, because you can see the V. And this is the uh, wannabe the wannabe button pusher. So right. anybody that knows about this is that... Um, so you've got the, the tartan, um, tartan scarf here. He's not inside of it anymore because... We know. We know. And there's Lee being the wannabe button pusher and being... Being being C3PO, so that and he's got a DX9 here as well. So there's you know it's 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 <laughs> it's that kind of thing. So it's cre it's all about creating a hook. And um, you know we had the whole thing of celebration with um, the Lee Duinos. We had the T-shirt. Um, we had the Lee T thing. We've had you know there's, there's tons of stuff. Sorry sorry about your toe. Didn't mean to kick you. That's right. The other um, there's all that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, I think he's obsessed with me. You know, that's that's the, the true well, shell. So, to move off... No, no, I was just going to ask a couple more questions. Okay. Um, so, in relationship to the answer is that you, you felt it was a hook for Lee to get some more followers Listen, going Giles, forward on that. Let, let, let me tell you something straight right now. Yeah? It's not sexual. I am the one and only person that's keeping Lee Towers irrelevant right now. <laughs> okay? Who else is out there? What's his agent doing? And I said to his agent at Celebration, what are you doing for Lee Towersy right now? And he had no answers. 
I'm creating merch, I'm creating websites, fan bases, uh, Mark, du you know, the, the, the Lee Duinos, t-shirts, all that, all that flash stuff. What's Lee doing? You know, he's busy filming. He hasn't got time to do this kind of stuff. His agent isn't worth a bloody piss. Absolutely 100%. So big, the biggest thing in my life at the moment is, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, the baby. Baby Edison. Um, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a culture shift to say the least, um, but you know we'll we'll move forward, and I'm pretty sure the Isofix will go inside the ALT, and sh sooner or later you'll see him being driven around in his own little custom droid. And I think that's you know if you can do something for your kid, I think you know trying to be awesome is um, is certainly the way forward for you know that whole thing. So um, yeah. Okay. Let's let's talk a bit a short a bit about three D printing. So, um, how many printers do you have at the moment? Then? Twenty five. Beg your pardon. Seriously. Or yeah, here, here, and also in the garage. So the gar the garage isn't um, isn't clean at the moment. But yeah, the majority. So I've got. So in here at the moment we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's uh, seven. Yeah, um, and then the the rest are out in the out in the yeah. So and I've got two more on the way. So how many are FDM and how many are um, resin? Two resins. The rest are FDM. So, um, in recommendation, not obviously naming a name, but what recommendations would you give to someone who wanted to buy a three D printer, particularly for droid building? What so size wise, what sort of type? Should well, if you've got experience in it and you're confident, then definitely a rat rig, uh, V Core Three, which is that one over there. Uh, it does a whole host of really awesome things, but it's a steep learning curve. If you want something that's going to be easy, then it's going to be traditionally the Creality S5 um, for droid building. Uh, but I wouldn't completely rely on 3D printing for for anything like that. Um, chase it up. I've got three S5s, um, two of which I've just broken down. Because the rat rigs. Do you want to explain about the S5 and a quick bed size for those people that don't know? Yeah, sure. So uh, those bed sizes are 500 by 500, and you know you're able to print um, a full-size droid um, in parts, so the dome, uh, the body, etc., etc. On 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 that. Um, the rat rig V3 500 is actually 530 by 530. Uh, and it's super reliable. You can use all the parts that you think are the best. So Bontech and Slice Engineering are my, my favourites. And uh, it's a Core XY setup. And I think I think they hold the far, one of the fastest times for the speedboat race on uh, 3D printing at the moment. Yeah. So um, later on today, I'll be installing an accelerometer on there as well. Um, and then you can then basically tune that up so you don't get any ringing or or any kind of the quality will certainly go up but the majority of the printers that I'm sent are end of three style clones so the two you know 250 by 250 and one of the droids that I'm building at the moment is majority printed on um, on the ender style printers I've got I think I've got five enders I've got an ender idex on I've got all sorts of crazy um, modifications that I do on these things so yeah, um, but Creality is you know it's a it, there's a bunch of support out, of, out there for that. So um, and there's new printers coming out all the time, of course. I would say so. What is your sort of go-to filament, uh, sort of like PLA, PETG, or so on? Uh, PETG, 100%. So the one you run an extremely successful company. Um, how do you think that's helped you be part of the droid community? Um. Well, what it has done is it's allowed me to do the stuff that I do. So we mentioned about you know being able to just run out and purchase a droid or parts for a droid, and some of those will run into seven eight grand. You know, it's it's a lot of money. So I've been quite fortunate to be able to to be able to be in a position where I can just go out and buy something. Obviously, that position has slightly changed now with uh, Hannah not being working anymore and Edison coming along and all that kind of stuff. Having said that. Um, you know, if if something did come up, then I probably would buy another one. 
Um, for those people that don't know, do you want to say what you're what you do in your daily job? Very little. <laughs> Very little now. Yeah, especially on the recent videos you've shown. You know? Absolutely. That's right. Yeah, so I run a uh, waste electronic recycling business that uh, I've been doing for the last 10 years. Myself and my business partner, also called Sam, and uh, we collect and recycle all electronics in the UK and anything with a plug or battery, we collect it um, and recycle it back into new things so it gets sold back into industry. So plastics will probably go back out to China or um, metals will go into Europe, batteries go into Europe. Um, and we're the facilitators of collecting that equipment and uh, getting it to its final resting place. So um, it's like a computer graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the droid community, um, yeah. what's your most strangest or, or funniest kind of moment within? within? Um, I, I remember uh, we were out somewhere and I was following this woman around with the droid and she just kissed it on the dome. And I thought it was, you know, when you look, you see something, and you go, "Wow, that's that's a bit weird." And I, I, I couldn't quite get to. It was obviously a, a quite a touching moment, but I couldn't really rationalise what was going on and why that happened. I just thought I was being a bit annoying, you know, chasing <laughs> someone around, beeping, wolf whistling, and things like that. And uh, it was just really, really quite bizarre. And then uh, the Comic Con, we had the girl with the. Um, big boobies and she kept rubbing it oh I can't say that okay um, but she, she she dropped them on the dome um, which was a bit surreal um, as long as it wasn't on like Britain's Got Talent where she squashes a can no no um, Anthony Daniels banging the uh, dome so hard that he caused a dent in it <gasps> was quite interesting oh dear um, you know there's not anything that's been sort of super super weird but um you know, it's it's all been very positive, I think, throughout. So, yeah. Sorry, I haven't got a really cool story. Sam, Giles, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. No uh, it's been brilliant. It's really entertaining and involved. We haven't got the mugs like uh, the Sam and Lee show has. So no, no. But we've got a sticker for you. Hey, there I do you like that. I something, do something like to remember. You are. Look at that. There we go. These are, as as we said before, they are available to. Uh, um, on our website, on the Motor Science website, which the link will just appear now. Look at that, it's just appeared. How many people call you G? Uh, I get called G Man. G Man? Mm, G Man. Okay, G Man. 